Beverly. Sa kasalukuyan, nakikita na po natin ang uh, Pangulo na nasa front lobby at uh, papasok na dito sa session hall. Inaasahan po natin na sa pagdating po ng Pangulo ay ibibigay niya na ang pinakahihintay natin ikalawang uh, State of the Nation address. Narinig na po natin, meron na pong announcement ng uh, pagdating sa loob ng session hall ni Pangulong Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Kasama po ang uh, Senate President, ganyan din ang uh, Speaker of the House. Kani-kanina po ay nauna nang pumasok ang mga miyembro ng Welcoming Committee. Ganon din po ang uh, Joint Committee na siya pong uh, nag-notify na ang uh, Presidente ay uh, pumasok na at uh, ang kanyang mga escorts na na po nakikita natin. Buhay na buhay po rito sa loob at ang lahat ay excited na marinig ang ikalawang sona ng Pangulo. Inaasahan po natin si Senate President Franklin Drillon ang siya pong uh, tatawag ng Joint Session to Order. Ayan po ang Pangulo, sinasalubong ng mga kongresista at kinakamayan po siya, naglalakad at siya po ay uh, patungo na sa mamaya siya po ay pupunta sa lower level rostrum at dito po siya magtatalumpati ng kanyang ikalawang sona. Isang standing ovation po ang uh, ibinibigay sa Pangulo. Siya po ay uh, kinakamayan ng uh, welcoming committee. Paakyat na po ang Pangulo dito sa rostrum. Kasama po si uh, Senate President Franklin Drillon. Maya-maya lang si Senate President Franklin Drillon We'll call the joint session to order at uh, susunda naman po ni House Speaker Jose de Venecia. On the part of the Senate, the joint session is called to order. On the part of the House of Representatives, the joint session is called to order. Please rise for the singing of the national anthem. Please remain standing for the nation's prayer. Padalangin ng bayan. Panginoong may kapal, gabayan mo po ang lahing ito. Allah may kapal. Akayin mo po ang tanging lahing namin. Tanging lahi na iyong kaloob, ikaw ang aming paningin, ikaw ang tanging pag-ibig. Sa ilalim ng malayang demokrasya, iba't ibang mga tinig, alalayan mo dakilang lumikha ang aming mga lider na itampok ang diwa ng pagkakaisa para sa inang bayan at para sa kadakilaan mo. Panginoong pinagpala at nagpapala, ituro mo sa amin ang paraan para manalik sa aming mga lider, gabayan mo ang aming mga puno na manguna sa ngalan ng paglilingkod, 
na walang pag-iibot at pinasisigla lamang ng diwa ng kagalingang pang lahat. Panginoong dakila sa lahat, pagbuklurin mo ang puhunan at paggawa, ang dalaway bukal ng buhay at yaman. Hindi dapat malangis ang tubig sa isang banga. Hayang ang pawis ay magsikhay, tulungan ang puhunan may diwa ng pagkalinga. Panginoong may kapal, bagamat sunod-sunod ang pagsubok, tigip pa rin kami ng pag-asa at pananali. Ikaw lamang, Panginoong Diyos, at halang kabunian ang aming timon sa paglalakbay naming Pilipino, siya nawa. Ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, Honorable Members of the Congress of the Philippines, Her Excellency, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, the President of the Republic of the Philippines. Thank you, Speaker Jose de Venecia. Senate President Franklin Rilon, the Justices of the Supreme Court, distinguished members of the Senate, and the House of Representatives, His Excellency Archbishop Antonio Franco, Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, your Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the Cabinet, members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, members of the police, fellow workers in government, honored guests, mga minamahal kong kababayan. In a country where a man's worth was measured by his poverty, he was born in a Nipah hut, into a family that tilled less than a hectare of land. After years of hard struggle and brilliant achievement, my father took his oath as President of the Philippines on ground made hollow by the martyrdom of our national hero, a hero whose name he would honor and whose ideals he would pursue. Indeed, in a democracy, a man may rise to the nation's highest service by dint of energy and intelligence alone, without regard to wealth and connections, of which my father had none. It was Jose Rizal who wrote, A life dedicated to a great ideal is useless. Not dedicated to a great ideal is useless. A mere pebble in the field that forms no part of an edifice. The words of Josdado Macapagal echoed this theme as, as he assumed the mantle of national leadership 40 years ago. No president can build the whole edifice of a nation. All that he is called upon to do is to add a fine stone to that edifice, so that those who shall come after him may add other fine stones that will go for a strong and enduring structure. Modest words from a modest man who would yet change for all time how a feudal society would come to view a vital institution, land reform. My countrymen, the fine stone I should like to add to the edifice of our nation, right above the stone of social justice that my father left behind, is a strong republic. Two essential features mark out 
a strong republic. The first is independence from class and sectoral interests so that it stands for the interests of the people rather than of a powerful minority. The second is the capacity represented through strong institutions and a strong bureaucracy to execute good policy and deliver essential services, the things that only governments can do. The results of these two features, good policies and empowered institutions, is faster economic development and social reform. A strong republic takes care of the people and takes care of their future. Thus, a strong republic is the bedrock of the victory we seek over poverty within the decade. During these past 18 months, our efforts to build the strong republic have been difficult with both domestic and global conditions extremely harsh. At home, the poor were pitted against the rich to further inflame our nation's social divisions. Abroad, the contracting economies of our main trading partners were further aggravated by the tensions generated by the global war against terrorism. Meanwhile, one shocking corporate scandal after another severely eroded public faith in the most promising system for conducting economic activity, the free market. These were the large, long-term crises of social justice and the capitalist system itself, whose resolution awaits events well beyond one small nation's ability to influence in the short term. But as I report on the state of the nation today, I can say this, the immediate crisis have been resolved. This resolution was achieved by focusing on three things. First, by showing tangible results in the delivery of government services. Thus, in my State of the Nation address last year, I did something never done before. I detailed a long list of measurable targets that would show a government on the move, marking progress by swift, sure steps, despite the turbulent state of domestic and global affairs. Halimbawa, target natin no isang taon, dalawang daang libong hektarya para sa land reform. Nakamit natin dalawang daan at limampung libong hektarya. At congratulations sa mga probinsyang top-notchers, Negros Occidental at Sultan Kudarat. Itong dalawang probinsya, bawat isa, ay humigit ng 7,000 hektarya ng reforma sa lupa. Target natin, 20 bilyong piso para sa modernisasyon ng agrikultura. Nakamit natin 24 na bilyon. Target natin, sandaan at limampung libong pamilyang maralit ang tagalunsot na makatitiyak sa lupang tinitirikan. Nakamit natin sandaan at walumpung libo. Target natin, sandaan at limang pung libong pamilyang mahihirap na magkakaroon ng pabahay, 
nakamit natin sandaan at limampung libo na nga. Target natin sa libong rolling stores na magbebenta ng bigas sa 14 pesos per kilo. Nakamit natin 1,500 rolling stores. Target natin ibaba sa kalahati ang presyo ng gamot na madalas bilhin ng mahihirap. Nakamit natin mahahanap ang mababang presyong gamot sa mga parmasya ng walumpung ospital ng pamalaan at sa mga outlet ng Unilab. But sad to say, except for Unilab, the wider distribution network of commercial drug stores, under pressure from the multinational drug companies, will not sell our cheaper medicines. We are studying punitive measures to correct this unfair, unjust, and heartless situation. Target natin liman da ang libong maralita para sa health insurance. Nakamit natin apat na milyon. Target natin, pagdating ng 2004, may eskwela sa bawat barangay. May 1,612 na barangay na wala pang eskwela. Nakamit natin, 1,005 na malapit ng matapos, bukod pa sa 285 school buildings na humahalagang 100 million pesos galing sa alokasyon ni Senate President Franklin Drilon. Target natin, kompletong libro sa pangunahing subjects sa grades 1 to 4 at sa first at second year high school. Nakamit natin, magkakaroon ngayong taon ng 54 million books para sa labing anim na milyong estudyante. Target natin, pag-ibayuhin ang pagtuturo ng mathematics. Nakamit natin, dagdag na oras para sa math sa bagong curriculum. Target natin, mas maraming guro. Nakamit natin, labin limang libong bagong guro. Target natin, dagli ang trabaho para sa 20,000 out-of-school youth. Nakamit natin, 30,000. At noong isang taon, dinala ko ang tatlong batang kumakatawan sa adhikain ng payatas. Sabi nila, ang kailangan nila ay edukasyon kabuhayan, pabahay. Higit na apat na daan ng batang tagapayatas ay eskolar na ngayon. Kasama na si Jason, Erwin, at Jomar. Halos walong daang pamilya ang nabigyan ng kabuhayan kasama ang pamilya nila. May pitong daang pamilyang binigyan ng karapatang bilhin ang lupang kanilang tinitirahan doon sa payatas. Inaatasan ko ang Department of Environment and Natural Resources na apurahin ang pag-ayos ng natitirang problema sa lupa ng mga residente sa payatas. This is just a tip of our accomplishments, all in just the first year of the 10-year fight I projected against poverty. 
I am submitting the entire iceberg to Congress in a comprehensive performance report. For a good measure, it has been published and nationally circulated. These were our commitments. We delivered on them. A strong republic does what it says. It takes care of the people and takes care of their future. Our second focus to achieve the resolution of the immediate crisis was the preservation and defense of the Republic against forces that seek to destroy its unity and tear the fabric of its society, not least in the name of ideas that history has already passed by. The turning points are clear. This year, May 1 passed peacefully. This year, our soldiers rescued Gracia Burnham and finished off her terrorist captor. <clears throat> this year, what used to be Camp Abu Bakr became an authentic community of new hopes and dreams where our flag flies and our soldiers protect those who have returned to their homes. Beyond the symbolic significance of these accomplishments, we have brought back interfaith solid solidarity, energized by the invaluable initiative of Speaker Jose de Venecia. And we have sealed peace agreements with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. We achieved all of this backed by the valor, professionalism, and restraint of our soldiers and police. I salute our men and women in uniform at the forefront of our Republic's efforts to fight terror and enforce peace. The third focus to resolve the crisis and build a strong Republic was to restore macroeconomic stability and win back investor confidence. The linchpin was to control our fiscal deficit. If EDSA II had not happened, the government would simply have gone bankrupt with a deficit of 245 billion pesos. But we controlled the deficit, brought it down to 147 billion pesos and against all odds turned our international credit rating from risky to stable. It was hard work here and abroad to rekindle global interest in our country but we did it. <laughs> the adoption of strong administrative measures, including fighting smuggling and grafting corruption, will enable us to close the gap in our revenue targets for this year. The basic macro signs indicate that things are under control. Inflation is at a low, driven down by stable food prices and now by declining power costs. <laughs> Nang ako ay naging Pangulo, ang presyo ng galunggong ay 80 pesos ang kilo. No isang linggo, Nakabili ako sa palengke ng 60 pesos lamang.
Ang presyo rin ng bigas na binibilim ng mahihirap ay nananatiling 16 pesos ng kilo sa palengke at 14 pesos sa rolling store, gaya pa rin ng isang taon. Interest rates are also at a low and our peso is stable. From 56 pesos to the dollar, it is now a little over 50 pesos. <laughs> Internationally, the Philippines is back on the map. We are the third best performing economy in Asia and the best in Southeast Asia. As a result of our decisive action after September 11, the Philippines is now a recognized player in world affairs. The President of the Philippines was the first head of government to emphasize the interconnection between the war against terrorism and the war against poverty. Now, nations large and small embrace this interconnection. We have gained powerful allies in our domestic war against terrorism. I am certain that our increased international visibility will continue generating capital inflows for the Philippines. Where we have fallen short of achieving what we intended, it has not been from misdirection or a lack of trying. After all, it has really been only one year and a half. In any event, I promise to work even harder if that is possible and do even better because I believe that there is always room for improvement. I cannot grow taller, but I can always get better. <laughs> My working agenda for the coming year will focus on creating and improving job opportunities. Citizens with rewarding jobs, paying decent wages, constitute not just a stone in the edifice, but the very foundation of a strong republic. We need investments to generate jobs. And to draw in investments, we will address certain problems in the short term. Katiwalian, peace and order, and the cost of power. Bilang Pangulo, tinatanggap ko ang pahayag ng mga negosyante na dapat sugpuin ang katiwalian sa bansa. Noong isang taong nga, Sa aking State of the Nation address, sinabi ko na na aalisin natin ang mga hadlang sa ating productivity kagaya ng mahal na kuryente at katiwalian. At dahil ako ay naluklok sa pagkapangulo, dala ng malawakang galit sa anomalia, alam kong kailangan wakasan ang katiwalian. Naniniwala rin ako na pinahihina ng katiwalian ang daloy ng puhunan sa ating bansa. Kaya noong isang taon, sinabi ko na ang kabinete ko ay kailangan gumawa ng konkretong resulta sa paglaban sa katiwalian. Pinapaalala ko sa kanila ngayon na sa mga sumusunod na araw, magbigay ng kanilang ulat 
sa naturang mga resulta. But even now, I can tell you that our new e-procurement program is saving billions and minimizing anomalies. Even now, I can tell you that the Presidential Anti-Graft Commission is doing its best to ensure that good governance is carried out. Inaatasan ko ang PAGC na gumawa rin ang ulat tungkol sa kanilang trabaho. Tungkol naman sa katiwalian sa mga korte, inaatasan ko ang Department of Justice na kasuhan yung prosecutor na tinuloy pa yung kaso kontra sa Kimberly Clark kahit nagkaroon na ng affidavit of desistance ang complainant. Kaya tuloy ang Kimberly Clark ay dinala yung kanyang Asia Operations sa Thailand and best na sa Pilipinas. Inaasahan ko rin kasuhan ng DOJ yung prosecutor na ginawang accessory lamang and best na principal yung ilang mga nagkidnap kay Rowena Chu. At inaatasan ko rin ang DOJ na kasuhan pati na rin ang mga West na gumagawa ng katiwalian. Noong isang taon, sinabi ko, nagagawin nating sample ang BIR at Customs sa paglaban sa katiwalian. This is still a continuing effort. Tax evasion is a white-collar crime, and the response is a white-collar response. Systems improvement, audit, prosecution. Smuggling is something else. It is done by hoodlums and criminal gangs. But the punishment for both must be the same. Blue collar time, kalaboso. Indeed, criminal gangs and homegrown terrorists have exploited the poisoned political atmosphere to spread poisons of their own. Kidnapping, gambling, drug dealing, rampant smuggling. You have seen political will in the harsh interpretation of command responsibility with regard to illegal gambling. That draconian application was a dress rehearsal for enforcing command responsibility in the even more difficult challenges of kidnapping, drug dealing, and smuggling. I am determined to build a strong republic by breaking the back of terrorism and criminality. In the year 2000, despite all the rampant efforts of rampant smuggling, only 16 million pesos worth was confiscated. But last year, in a show of political will, my administration seized 1.2 billion pesos worth of smuggled goods. <laughs> including more than a million bags of smuggled rice as compared to much less than 100,000 the year before. I congratulated the Commissioner of Customs, but told him also, go beyond getting the smuggled goods and get me the big-time smugglers. I have entered the DOJ to charge these big-time smugglers not just with smuggling, 
but also with economic sabotage, non-bailable capital offense. <laughs> Criminal syndicates will be treated as what they are, direct threats to national security. Criminals are criminals, whether of the common kind or the kind that will kill in the name of political advocacies. They will feel the full brunt of the arsenal of democracy. Freedom, too, is entitled to self-defense. I have given very clear orders to spare nothing in hunting down kidnappers. We will go by scorecards and track progress by counting beans if we have to. Remember Mary Grace Rosadas of Eurotex, who was kidnapped from UP. Remember her aunt, Connie Wong, who was killed by the kidnappers. Remember Rowena Chu, who was kidnapped in La Union. Remember the owner of Liana Supermarket. Remember the whispers about the kidnapping of a granddaughter of a big banker and the son of a steel magnet. We have taken down the syndicates responsible for kidnapping them and 52 other victims. In the process, 170 kidnappers were either killed or captured. The ideal response to kidnapping was in the case of Rowena Chu. She was rescued in eight days, the ransom money recovered, and her kidnappers were arrested and are now facing trial. That is why hers was the first but the last kidnapping to take place in Region 1 in my administration. I want to smash the other 21 syndicates in the same way. We are getting a clearer picture of the leadership, membership, an area of operations of these syndicates. I now want their linkages and modus operandi. I am overseeing how they are being watched, trapped, and infiltrated. We will start with the two biggest syndicates, the Bukala and Fajardo gangs. I have challenged the Philippine National Police to eliminate them within a year. I have told the PNP that they must start with the cleansing of their own ranks. You remember the front page photographs of that shootout last Saturday. In the front seat next to the driver was a PNP, a PNP Academy graduate, but a wall from the police force. He was the planner and the negotiator of that gang. The rascals among the police disgraced the uniform and unfortunately paint in the same broad brush the majority who do their duty well. I salute the men and women of the police who scorned to be bribed and confiscated 500 kilograms of shabu in Quezon Province last year and caught the biggest fish so far in the drug trade. I salute the men and women who raided the shabu factories in Batangas, San Bales, San Juan, Varsity Hills, and other places seizing a total of 5 billion pesos worth of illegal drugs and laboratory equipment 
in the largest drug bust ever in our history of crime fighting. Within a month, we shall organize 